Hi, welcome back everyone. Today we are going to read chapter 5 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and it is called Diagon Alley. When we last left, Harry had just met Hagrid and learned that he was a wizard. Harry woke early the next morning. Although he could tell it was daylight, he kept his eyes shut tight. It was a dream, he told himself firmly. I dreamed a giant called Hagrid came to me to tell me I was going to school for wizards. When I open my eyes, I'll be at home in my cupboard. There was suddenly a loud tapping noise. And there's Aunt Petunia knocking on the door, Harry thought, his heart sinking. But he still didn't open his eyes. It had been such a good dream. Tap, tap, tap. All right, he mumbled. I'm getting up. He sat up and Hagrid's heavy coat fell off of him. The hut was full of sunlight. The storm was over. Hagrid himself was asleep on the collapsed sofa, and there was an owl wrapping its claw on the window, a newspaper held in its beak. Harry scrambled to his feet. So happy, he felt as though a large balloon was swelling inside him. He went straight to the window and jerked it open. The owl swooped in and dropped the newspaper on top of Hagrid, who didn't wake up. The owl then fluttered onto the floor and began to attack Hagrid's coat. Don't do that! Harry tried to wave the owl out of the way, but it snapped its beak fiercely at him and carried on savaging the coat. Hagrid, said Harry loudly, there's an owl! Pay him, Hagrid grunted into the sofa. What? He wants pay him for delivering the paper. Look in the pockets. Hagrid's coat seemed to be made of nothing but pockets. Bunches of keys, slug pellets, balls of string, mint humbugs, tea bags. Finally, Harry pulled out a handful of strange looking coins. Give him five nuts, Hagrid, said Hagrid sleepily. Nuts? The little bronze coins. Harry counted out five little bronze coins and the owl held out its leg so that he could put the money into a small leather pouch tied to it. Then it flew off through the open window. Hagrid yawned loudly, sat up and stretched. Best be off, Harry. Lots to do today. Gotta get up to London and buy y'all your stuff for school. Harry was turning over the wizard coins and looking at them. He had just thought of something which made him feel as though the happy balloon inside him had got a puncture. Um, Hagrid? Yeah, said Hagrid, who was pulling on his huge boots. I haven't got any money. And you heard Uncle Vernon last night. He won't pay for me to learn magic. Don't worry about that, said Hagrid, standing up and scratching his head. Do you think your parents didn't leave you anything? But if their house was destroyed, they didn't keep their gold in their house, boy. Nah, first stop for us is Gringotts. Wizard's Bank. Have a sausage. They're not bad cold, and I wouldn't say no to a bit of your birthday cake neither. Wizards have banks? Just the one, Gringotts, run by the goblins. Harry dropped the bit of sausage he was holding. Goblins? Yeah, so you mad trying to rob it. I'll tell you that. Never mess with goblins, Harry. Gringotts is the safest place in the world for anything you want to keep safe. Except maybe Hogwarts. As a matter of fact, I gotta visit Gringotts anyway. For Dumbledore. Hogwarts business. Hagrid drew himself up proudly. He usually gets he usually gets me to do important stuff for him. Fetching you fetching you, getting things from Gringotts. He knows he can trust me. Got everything. Come on then. Harry followed Hagrid out of the rock. The sky was quiet quite clear now, and the sea gleamed in the sunlight. The boat Uncle Vernon had hired was still there, with a lot of water in the bottom after the storm. How did you get here? Harry asked, looking around for another boat. Flew, said Haggard. Flew? Yeah, but we'll get back in this. Not supposed to use magic now that I got you. They settled down the boat, Harry still staring at Haggard, trying to imagine him flying. Seems a shame to row, though, said Haggard, giving Harry another of his sideways looks. If I was to, uh, speed things up a bit, 
Would you mind not mentioning it at Hogwarts? Of course not, said Harry, eager to see more magic. Hagrid pulled out the pink umbrella again, tapped it twice on the side of the boat, and they sped off toward the land. Why would you be mad and try to rob Gringotts? Harry asked. Spells, enchantments, said Hagrid, unfolding the newspaper as he spoke. They say there's dragons guarding the high security vaults, and then you gotta find your way. Gringotts is hundreds of miles under London, see? Deep under the gr underground. You'd die of hunger trying to get out even if you did manage to get your hands on something. Harry sat and thought about this a while while Haggard read his newspaper, The Daily Prophet. Harry had learned from Uncle Vernon that people liked to be left alone while they did this, but it was very difficult. He'd never had so many questions in his life. Ministry of Magic, messing things up as usual, Hagrid muttered, turning the page. There's a Minister of Magic? Harry asked before he could stop himself. Of course, said Hagrid. They wanted Dumbledore for Minister, of course, but he'd never leave Hogwarts, so old Cornelius Fudge got the job. Bungler if there ever was one. So he pelts Dumbledore with owls every morning, asking for advice. But what does a Ministry of Magic do? Well, their main job is to keep it from the Muggles that there are still witches and wizards up and down the country. Why? Why? Blimey, Harry! Everyone would be wanting magic solutions to their problems. Now we're best left alone. At this moment, the boat bumped gently into the harbor wall. Hagrid folded up his newspaper and they clambered up the stone steps of the street. Passers-by stared a lot at Hagrid as they walked through the little town to the station. Harry couldn't blame them. Not only was Hagrid twice as tall as anyone else, he kept pointing at perfectly ordinary things like parking meters and saying loudly, See that, Harry? Things these muggles dream up, eh? Hagrid, said Harry panting a bit as he ran to keep up. Did you say there are dragons at Gringotts? Well, so they say, said Haggard. Crikey, I'd like a dragon. You'd like one? Wanted one ever since I was a kid. Here we go. They had reached the station. There was a train to London in five minutes time. Harry, or Haggard, who didn't understand muggle money, as he called it, gave the notes to Harry so he could buy their tickets. People stared more than ever on the train. Hagrid took up two seats and sat knitting what looked like a canary yellow circus tent. Still got your letter, Harry? He asked as they counted the stitches. Harry took the parchment envelope out of his pocket. Good, said Hagrid. There's a list there. Everything you need. Harry unfolded a second piece of paper he hadn't noticed the night before and read. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uniform. First year students will require three sets of plain work robes, black, one plain pointed hat, black for day wear, one pair of protective gloves, dragon hide or similar, one winter coat, black silver fastenings. Please note that all pupils' clothes should carry name tags. Set books. All students should have a copy of each of the following. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1 by Miranda Goshock. A History of Magic by Bathilda Bagshot. Magical Theory by Adelbert Waffling. A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch. 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Felita Spore. Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander, The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. Other Equipment Wand One Cauldron, Pewter, Standard Size 2, One Set of Glass or Crystal Files, One Telescope, One Set Brass Scales. Students may also bring an owl or a cat or a toad. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed their own broomsticks. Can we buy all this in London? Harry wondered aloud. If you know where to go, said Hagrid. 
Harry had never been to London before, although Hagrid seemed to know where he was going. He was obviously not used to getting there in an ordinary way. He got stuck in the ticket barrier on the underground and complained loudly that the seats were too small and the trains too slow. I don't know how the muggles manage without magic, he said, as they climbed a broken down escalator which led up a bustling road lined with shops. Hagrid was so huge that he parted the crowd easily. All Harry had to do was keep close behind him. They passed bookshops and music stores, hamburger bars and cinemas, but nowhere that looked as if it could sell a magic wand. This was just an ordinary street full of ordinary people. Could there really be piles of wizard gold buried miles beneath them? Were, they re were there really shops that sold spell books and broomsticks? Might this not all be some huge joke that the Dursleys had cooked up? If Harry hadn't known that the Dursleys had no sense of humor, he might have thought so. Yet, somehow, even though everything Hagrid had told him so far was unbelievable, Harry couldn't help but trusting him. This is it, said Hagrid, coming to a halt. The Leaky Cauldron. It's a famous place. It was a tiny, grubby-looking pub, if Hagrid hadn't pointed it out, Harry wouldn't even have noticed it was there. The people hurrying by didn't glance at it. Their eyes slid from the big bookshop on one side to the record shop on the other, as if they couldn't see the leaky cauldron at all. In fact, Harry had the most peculiar feeling that only he and Hagrid could see it. Before he could mention this, Hagrid had uh, steered him inside. For a famous place, it was very dark and shabby. A few old women were sitting in a corner, drinking tiny glasses of sherry. One of them was smoking a long pipe. A little man in a top hat was talking to the old barman, who was quite bald and looked like a gummy walnut. The low buzz of chatter stopped when they walked in. Everyone seemed to know Hagrid. They waved and smiled at him. And the barman reached for a glass, saying, The usual, Hagrid? Can't, Tom. I'm on Hogwarts business, said Hagrid, clapping his great hand on Harry's shoulder and making Harry's knees buckle. Goodness, said the barman, peering at Harry. Is this? It can't be. The leaky cauldron had suddenly gone completely still and silent. Bless my soul, whispered the old barman. Harry Potter. What an honor. He hurried out from behind the bar, rushed toward Harry, and seized his hand, tears in his eyes. Welcome back, Mr. Potter. Welcome back. Harry didn't know what to say. Everyone was looking at him. The old woman with the pipe was puffing on it without realizing it had gone out. Hagrid was beaming. There was a great scraping of chairs, and the next moment, Harry found himself shaking hands with everyone in the leaky cauldron. Doris Crockford, Mr. Potter, can't believe I'm meeting you at last. So proud, Mr. Potter, I'm just so proud. Always wanted to shake your hand. I am all a flutter. Delighted, Mr. Potter, just can't tell you. Diggles the name, Daedalus Diggles. I've seen you before, said Harry as Daedalus Diggles. Top hat fell off in excitement. You bowed to me once in a shop. He remembers, cried Daedalus Diggles, looking around at everyone. Did you hear that? He remembers me. Harry shook hands again and again with Doris Crockford, kept coming back for more. A pale young man made his way forward, very nervously. One of his eyes was twitching. Professor Quirrell, said Hagrid. Harry, Professor Quirrell will be one of your teachers at Hogwarts. Potter, stammered C Professor Quirrell, grasping Harry's hand. I c c can't tell, tell you how ple p pleased I am to meet you. What sort of magic do you teach, Professor Quirrell? D defense against the d dark arts, muttered Professor Quirrell, as he thought he'd rather not think about it. N not that you n need it, P Potter, he laughed nervously. You you'll be getting all your equipment, I suppose. I've got to pick up a new book on vampires myself. 
He looked terrified at the very thought, but the others wouldn't let Professor Quirrell keep Harry to himself. It took almost ten minutes to get away from them at last. Harry managed to make himself heard over the babble. Must get on. Lots to buy. Come on, Harry. Doris Crockford shook Harry's hand one last time, and Hagrid led him through the bar and out into a small walled courtyard where there was nothing but a dustbin and a few weeds. Hagrid grinned at Harry. Told you, didn't I? Told you you was famous. Even Professor Quirrell was trembling to meet you. Mind you, he's usually trembling. Is he always that nervous? Oh yeah, poor bloke, brilliant mind. He was fine while he was studying out of books, but then he took a year off to get some first-hand experiences. They say he met vampires in the Black Forest, and there was a nasty bit of trouble with a hag never been the same since. Scared the students. Scared of his own subject now. Where's, where's me umbrella? Vampires? Hags? Harry's head was swimming. Hagrid, meanwhile, was counting bricks on the wall above the dustbin. Three up, two across, he muttered. Right, stand back, Harry. He tapped the wall three times with the point of his umbrella. The brick he had touched quivered. It wriggled in the middle. A small hole appeared. It grew wider and wider. A second later, they were facing an archway long enough even for Hagrid. An archway onto a cobbled street which twisted and turned out of sight. Welcome, said Hagrid, to Diagon Alley.